Hi, I'm Bill Mould, and this short video is about fuels and explosives. To understand this, we'll take a quick look into organic chemistry, one of your favorite subjects. In the next five minutes, I'll give you an understanding of where the incredible power comes from that you see in the following clip. Cars burn gasoline, which is a complicated mixture of hydrocarbons, but we can approximate those by just considering octane as a good example. Here is the structure of octane, which has this molecular formula. When combusted in the presence of oxygen, octane yields carbon dioxide and water, which is the product of the combustion of any hydrocarbon. And there is quite a bit of heat given off, of course, too. This is the balanced equation, but I want to divide through by 2 so I can get rid of this prefix. And that gives me this formula here. We can see that we have gases on both sides. We have gases on the left in the form of oxygen, molecules from the air, and then the products, carbon dioxide and water, on the right-hand side. Now this is trinitrotoluene, or TNT, and it has this molecular formula. TNT is a derivative of benzene. This is another way I can show the benzene ring. This is toluene, and this would be trinitrotoluene. You see three nitro groups attached to the toluene molecule. TNT does not burn, it explodes, and when it does, you get carbon monoxide gas, nitrogen gas, hydrogen gas, and some solid carbon on the products. And, of course, once again, a great deal of heat. Here's my balanced equation, but I have a prefix again, so I'm going to divide through by 2 to eliminate the prefix. And that gives me this. I want now to compare octane with TNT and make a little table. In the table, I'm going to compare moles of gases, first for octane, and we'll look at the number of moles of gas of the products, the reactants, and then a ratio. I have 17 moles of products, which is just the sum of 8 and 9, 12 and a half, on the reactant side, and that gives me a ratio of about 1.4 to 1. Looking now at TNT, I have 10 moles of gases on the product side. On the reactant side, I have none because it's a solid, which really gives me an undefined ratio, but it's obviously pretty large. So, in a way, the defining difference between a fuel and an explosive is this. For octane, there is my fuel, but my oxygen has to be brought in from the outside in order to combust the fuel. Whereas in an explosive, the oxygen is already part of the molecule. Here are three more common explosives. If you look at them, you'll see that in the molecule of the explosive, there is an abundance of oxygen. Now we're going to look at nitromethane and get an insight into why so much energy comes from nitromethane. This is the nitromethane molecule. This is the formula for it. And this is the equation for the combustion of nitromethane with oxygen. If I balance that, I get this, but I want to get rid of that 4, so I have a, a, a 1 on the left. 
and that gives me this after I divide everything through by 4. Adding nitromethane into our table, we see we have, in terms of gases, we have 3 moles of gases in the product side and only 0 0.75 or 3 quarters of a mole on the reactant side and it gives me a ratio of 4 to 1 for nitromethane compared to octane which is only 1.4 to 1. So with my nitromethane since some of the oxygen needed for the reaction is already in the molecule I don't have to bring in too much oxygen from the outside whereas with my octane there is no oxygen in the molecule and all of the oxygen has to come in from the outside. So with nitromethane, I can use a very large amount of fuel in the cylinder because I don't need much oxygen from the outside, whereas with gasoline, a small amount of fuel and a lot of oxygen from the outside. And that is what gives these funny cars and top fuel dragsters their enormous power. Here's my contact information. Thank you for watching.